Peace everyone, I'm Mascart here and welcome back to the pastel tutorial. Today is actually going to be the final day of this project, so I uh, hope you're all excited to see how it finally comes all to life and everything like that. It's starting to look pretty good, but it needs a little bit of polish on it to make it, uh, to make it perfect. Anyways, um, so last week we did the base layers of the hair. And I want to emphasize that it was just the base layers, that's why the hair looks kind of helmet-like right now. And what I'm going to start off with today is finishing the hair and going through the steps that we went through last week. Now before I do that, I want to, I want to, go, over, um, I want to go over what I'm going to do for the, pol the polishing stage after I finish the hair. Uh, because I'm going to in introduce a couple new colors. Uh, these three colors here, I decided uh, I'm going to find ways to incorporate this in the polishing stage. I got this really nice purple color because I want to do her her eyeshadow on her eyes. I want to give it like a really nice purple, really nice purple around her eyes. And I went with like this really dark purple color. This is 385. Now in her skin, she has... Uh, a little bit more red and a little bit more orange in some of uh, in some of the areas, especially where the light, the sh the highlights kind of uh, hit and and diffuse into her skin. She gets a little bit pink in the cheeks and stuff. So I have this really nice fuchsia color. This is three three five, uh, and I actually I think I've used this color in the polishing stage of every single portrait slash figure, anything that involves skin. I've used this color. Um, and then the third and final color is a nice bright orange. And the same thing, I want to bring in some nice bright orange for her skin. And this is 221. So I just want to give you those colors really quick before I get started here. Uh, aside from that, um, not adding any new colors to the uh, array of colors that we've used so far. Um, and I have all of those colors here right now, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on the hair. And the, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is just kind of rework uh, the colors a little bit, especially the highlights. I want to give the highlights some of this blue. Uh, if you remember, this blue was used in the shirt and um, the highlights throughout this image have a really blue tone, like cool gray color to them. And so I want to incorporate that blue into the hair a little bit. Anyways, uh, let me say hello to a few people I see in the chat. Hello, uh, Seema, Alicia, Yagmer, Imak, Carrie, Catrice, Sherry, uh, Aaliyah, Barbara, Sketchbook, Peter, uh, Nis uh, Nis Nisam, Nay, Nay Sam, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, uh, Dipsika, uh, Andy, and Shiny. Welcome everybody. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions throughout the uh, process here, feel free to ask. So I'm just going to go over some of the areas where the highlights are. I don't want to add a lot of blue, but I do want to add a little bit before I get into the flyaways. So let me. Uh, let me recap last week a little bit on doing the hair. Do any of you remember the first rule of creating hair? I'll give you a minute in the chat to tell me what rule number one in doing hair is. What is the first rule of doing hair? <clears throat> I'll give you like uh, 30 seconds to answer. I say it all the time, I say it in every single tutorial repeatedly that I do hair, so let's see if you guys remember the rules. I'm only going to ask you for rule number one, so don't worry. There's basically one rule. Good morning to you, AM. Do it in chunks. So that's um, that's part of the process, but not the not the rule, not rule number one, the axiom of drawing hair. 
or painting here. Exactly, Sherry, yes. So rule, the, the big rule, the big axiom of, of drawing hair, painting hair, anything hair related is to always, always, always go in the direction that the hair is flowing. That's the way that I, that's the way that I describe it, the, the flow of the hair. <clears throat> now, Barbara, you're, you're, you're good on the process, and that's what we started with last week on the hair. The, the way that you start hair is you focus on the big shapes, and I call those shapes squiggly diamonds because they look, they're generally in the shape of diamonds if you were to stretch them out and just wiggle them a little bit. And so I call them squiggly, squiggly diamonds. And so the first step that we did was we filled in all of the dark black squiggly diamonds. And then from there, we filled in the base color of the, the hair isolating the highlights, then we covered up the highlights a little bit. And all we did, following the first axiom of doing hair, always moving in the direction that the hair is going, we just applied a couple layers of, of those four colors, right? There was only four colors. And that's what we were left with and what we have right now in front of us. And that was the first like four steps of doing the hair. Block in the large shapes and then establish the base color, which we use that brown color for, and then establish the highlights and basically ri rinse and repeat, uh, adding in some of the, f the flow of the hair. At no point last week did we add any individual hairs, right? Remember, I emphasized not doing that too soon, otherwise you're gonna be left with spaghetti and nobody wants spaghetti hair because it looks terrible. And so building up on top of what we did last week, we are going to start putting in some of those individual hairs. And to do that, I am going to use a variety of colors that we had used last week. One of them being this brown 726. And what I'm looking for, uh, you can use a reference photo for this, but what I'm looking for is cross sections. So I'm looking for where uh, single strands of hairs kind of cross one another and create a little bit of form and a little bit of uh, just interest in general. And one of those sections is like right here on, on the head. There's, there's a lot of hairs going all kinds of different directions and what I like to do to get the thinnest possible lines with pastel pencils is I like to have it really flat and drag it backwards like this. So lay it down and drag it backwards and I also give it a little bit of a spin while I do that that keeps the tip really uh, really sharp. And so I'm just going to create a few of those individual hairs and this, this uh, color, by the way, is 726. And I'm just gonna create some of those patterns there that I see in the reference photo. And they don't have to be perfect. They, they, they just need to be kind of close. And the important thing is remember the flow of the hair and use your whole arm to draw this. Don't, don't try to do it like this with your hand because you'll get, you'll get jagged lines. So use your whole arm and try to make it nice and fluid and flow really nicely. And we're going to do this with pretty much all of our colors, um, three or four of them at least. And we're just going to put in some of these, these little hairs here. And that's going to create all of the texture that we need to convince people that look at this painting that they're looking at hair. You don't have to go in and draw every single hair. You really only have to draw like you know, maybe 50, which is a lot less than the number of hairs people have on their heads, so. Hello, John, Sergio, good to see you, Julia. Did I miss anybody else in chat? Let's see here. 
The other, the other thing when you, when you get to this step, the fine tuning step like this, um, don't, don't use one, t one color too much. So add a few lines with one color and then move on to the next color because you can, you can start to make the hair a little bit too busy and it will start to look a little uh, artificial. Ironically, ironically, if you draw too many hairs, you'll start to look a little artificial there. So just uh, don't overdo it. Just do a few ha hairs here and there. Maybe I'd say about eight to 10 per color. All right, that's with the gray. Um, I'm gonna use, yeah, I'm gonna use the, the light brown color that we used for the highlights of the hair. This color here is the 620 color. I think we used a little bit of it here in the highlights. And so I'm just gonna add a few of these hairs. And these ones are gonna be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna keep those closer to the highlights in general. Did my computer get fixed okay? Um, my computer never broke. Did I miss something? Oh, thank you, uh, A-Line. I appreciate that. Oh, okay, you're, you're talking to somebody else about the computer. Okay, never mind. <laughs> And like I said, remember, not don't add too many of uh, one color, too many lines of one color. Keep it, keep a variety going on. So I'm not going to go too crazy with this 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 color here. Just want to add a, f a sprinkles of a few highlights. And like I said, keep spinning. Keep spinning the uh, the pencil. That will give you much cleaner lines. All right, let's see here. Um, she's got a flyaway that comes out like this. These are darker colors, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a few with light colors here. So this I'm going over the background now. And when you do the flyaways, now this this will take some practice. Doing flyaways well is going to take some practice. What's really, really important is that you don't do it slowly. And that's gonna be really tough for a lot of people. You have to you have to like flick your whole wrist and arm and, and get really loose. You have to get really loose with your arm and you have to move it in a nice smooth curve. If you if you do it anything less than a nice smooth curve, you're going to end up with flyaways that look a little jagged. And you have to be brave at this stage because, as you can see, I'm going over the background. I'm going um, I'm going uh, through all of the background and, and stuff like that. You can't really can't really go back on it. You have to you have to fully commit and just apply it. All right, I think that's good for that color. I still need, I still have more that I gotta do. Um, I tried to do your granddaughter's hair, which is, uh, or you tried to do it. Um, a dark ash blonde, okay. Very difficult with colors. Um, yes, so blonde is one of those colors. So blonde hair is actually tricky in the sense uh, the colors, the, the colors trick you. So blonde hair is actually 
mostly the color of dirty dishwater. No matter how golden blonde you see the, the hair, what creates the golden blonde look is not the foundational color of the hair, but the sparkles in the highlights. So the sparkles in the highlights are gonna have that platinum and gold and orange colors, but the base of the hair is going to be like a murky dishwater, grayish, brownish, yellowish. Um, there's, uh, I've done, um, let's see, I'm trying to think, did I do a blonde? I don't know if I did, I don't know if I've done a tutorial with, um, of a portrait with somebody with blonde hair. Sorry, I, I just, I, I like dark hair. So I, I guess I, I tend to pick portraits with, uh, with people with dark hair. Um, maybe I'll have to, maybe I'll have to do like a really nice platinum blonde portrait or something like that so I can talk about blonde. But yeah, you have to be very careful. Most of the brightness and yellowness and goldness of blonde hair comes in the toning stage uh, where you, you have like the base layer and then you start bringing in the bright yellow, usually. Good day to you as well, Chrissy. If I, I thought I said hello, but I feel like I forgot. Um, anyways, let's go with, let's go with some brown now. This color here we used in the hair, this is a 625. So again, some more, uh, some more individual hairs. And I'm going to keep my drawing just, or my painting, this orientation. Uh, it's very easy to, you know, shift your drawing around and, and whatnot to make it a bit easier on you when it comes to doing these flyaways, uh, because it can be a little bit tricky uh, from one single direction. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you work over the background, the soft pastel sometimes will kind of bunch up on the tip of your pencil. You can just wipe that off and make it a little bit easier on yourself. Oh, hey there, Peter. I uh, want to have a go at the ice cream project. Is there anywhere on the Patreon page which lists all the colored pencils needed to complete it? Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, if you go, I'm, I'm pretty sure I list all of the colors on the very first tutorial. So part one of that tutorial should have me listing all of the colors at the very beginning. I don't know, I can't remember if I added a list of them uh, on the reference photo or not, because I knew that I was doing that project on YouTube, and so I just didn't, I, I just didn't bother making the list um, on the actual reference photo. Because I usually do that, I usually put it on the reference photo like that. She has this one like flyaway here that's like really big. 
I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller because I don't really like the way it looks. There we go. See how much more alive her hair looks with just a few, a few extra lines? Um, you can also keep them, you know, you can keep the, uh, the flyaways, uh, the varying width of them. That's also a really good, really good idea. And let's see, let's do, let's cross over her hand a little bit and then, um, let's put a few, Come on, uh, coming just to, just over the highlight there. I feel like there's a couple, um, and then down here, past her ear, a few little flyaways there. Um, let's break up the monotony of that and just bring this curl kind of swooping in a little bit more. And make that kind of makes it feel more connected there. Yeah, that looks better. Oh, thank you, Shiny. Yeah, the, the flyaways are, are a lot of fun to do, and they're my favorite part of doing hair. Because it completely transforms. Like, how long have I been doing this? For like 10 minutes or something like that? And the hair looks completely different uh, than, than when I started. Uh, now I'm going to do two more colors. Uh, I'm going to do black to get some of the darker flyaways in here a little bit. Now with the black, you do want to be a little bit more careful with the placement. Uh, you don't want them to really show up a lot, especially if the hair isn't black. Like her hair is not black, there's just black shadows in it. I just broke the tip of my pencil off. That's disappointing. I didn't feel like I pressed very hard. Uh, must have just been weak. Um, yeah, that, that really, yeah. Um, Anyways, what I was saying is you don't want to you don't want to do too many that are black if the hair isn't actually black. It's mainly uh, just over the really dark areas that I want to create a few extra lines. And and sometimes black is better for over over the background also. It shows up a little bit better than some of the lighter colors. Yes, this is all pastels, Barbara. The lighter you touch, the thinner the lines you can get. So some of these like really, really thin flyaways coming off the head, I'll just barely touch the paper. There we go. And the final color I will be using is what we used in the highlights, and that's that 110 color. Now, just like the black, you want to be a little bit careful with the highlight color as well. You don't want to go crazy with the bright flyaways. This color might actually be too bright, but I'm going to go for it anyway. You got you to gotta kind of use the, the highlight color sparingly. This will, um, this will add a whole whole nother level of depth to the uh, to the hair. And you'll probably want to focus this color more around the highlights in general. Something like that, that looks pretty good. Let's maybe have one right in here, a couple of them maybe. You, you usually wanna start these where the highlights are and then have it coming from the highlights. Uh, contextually, that just makes more sense. And when it makes more sense, 
it tends to look better. Um, and then also if you happen to, uh, if you want to tone down the brightness of one of the highlights, you can just, you know, tap it with your finger a couple times and that will kind of smooth it out and blend it in with the other colors. Sometimes you'll get like a harsh edge that you want to fade into the picture. Like I feel like, um, I feel like there's a highlight right up here. This one that I added, like it just has kind of a hard edge. And so I'm just going to tap it with my blender there and it kind of fades into the hair. It looks more natural like that. See this one here, I'm not really fond of that edge there, so I want to kind of kind of just blend it in. Just make it slowly turn into a brighter highlight and it looks better that way. Alrighty then, I think, um, I think I'm going to call that done for the hair. I like, uh, yeah, I think that looks, I think that looks a lot better. Significantly better. And uh, yeah, I'm going to call the hair done. So let's see here, I'm going to, I'm going to save that color, that color. Um, I need that color also. So I'm gonna start working on the skin a little bit. Let's see, I might I might use that color. I might even use that color. Yeah, that color too. I'll definitely use black, so I gotta keep that. Uh, white, yeah, I might use white. Okay, let's put... Yeah, that should be good. If I need any other colors, I, I can always grab them. Um, gosh, I hate that I broke the tip of my black pencil off. Let me sharpen my pencil really quick, uh, because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna focus on the eyes and the lips. Because remember, I kind of, I kind of threw them together pretty pretty haphazardly, and I just want to make the eyes and the lips look really, really nice. So I need a really sharp pencil, so give me a second. Perfect. All right, let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. For some reason the picture is a little dark. I have I have two lights like right next to my drawing. For some reason it looks kind of dark. Anyways, um, I gotta zoom in on my reference photo also. I gotta see the details. All right. So one thing with the eyes, I'm going to go over the pupils a little bit. Just kind of darken some things up. You know what? I also forgot to add some of the orange. Uh, I think I asked you guys to, to remind me not to forget the eyebrows. Um, the 620 color, I need to go in here with the eyebrows and add, add some orange hairs to the eyebrows. I'm gonna go over top of them with black, so don't worry. There. Let me just go back over the eyebrows with the black.
and I'll just blend them out a little bit so they look a little bit more natural. Get rid of the roughness from the pencil. There we go. All right, now for the pupils. Make the pupils just a little bit bigger. Try to make them darker. Now, I want to mention that I am I am officially in the polishing stage. If you want to call your project done, you are more than welcome to. But I uh, I like to make I like to make small small adjustments at the end to just make everything look better. Uh, it looks a little rough in my opinion up close on camera but that's because I have really bad lighting and everything zoomed in looks pretty awful. This, this lighting really just makes all of my artwork look super bad on camera. Maybe one day I'll have proper lighting. All right, um, that's pretty good. Let's see here, I'm gonna add some brown to the eyes for the irises. And then we use just a hint of this 110 gray for a couple of the sparkles. There's one sparkle. There's two sparkles. Yeah, I agree, Sergio. It's not meant to be looked at under a microscope. If it was meant to be looked at under a microscope, then you would use a microscope to create it in the first place. All right. I think her eyes look a thousand times better already. Uh, what I want to do now, I'm going to add that new color, that purple that I grabbed, that 385, and I want to make her her eyeshadow look really, really nice. Really nice purple eyeshadow. I'm not going to go too extreme with the purple, but definitely going to make it more purpley. You can use whatever color you want. Don't have to use purple. Purple is uh, one of my favorite colors though. Purple and red are like my favorite colors. Not together though. I don't think purple and red look all that great together, but individually they're pretty, pretty nice colors. There we go. A nice touch of purple. Now I need to go a bit darker on the skin tone. So I'm gonna use uh, the 640 brown. What I want to do is I wanna darken the skin here around the eyelid so that I can bring out the highlights more to give it more of that shimmery look. So to give it the shimmery look, I have to go darker on all the parts that I don't want to be shimmery. It 
Am I going to replace the lighting and do a new setup when I move? Well, um, I wasn't going to say anything, but since he brought it up, um, my wife and I, we are not moving. We are staying in this flat. We, uh, since, well, since, um, since I'm just doing the polishing stages and, and there's not really any technical uh, parts left to this project, I, I will leave any questions that you guys have. You just feel free to ask away whatever you want to ask. In the meantime, I'll just kind of address this question about moving. Um, so The, the, the place that we are going to move in into in September, maybe September, it was, it's, it was supposed to be July 1st. Uh, we were supposed to move in July 1st, but uh, then sh the lady changed it. And um, then she, she told us that we should be able to move in September 1st. And so we are preparing for that. We are supposed to meet with her and pay the deposit or whatever. And she wanted like two and a half times the first month's rent as a deposit, which I thought was a little extreme, but I was like, whatever, we can, we can do that. And, um, she never, she never called us and she was already a little flaky as far as getting back to us because when I initially offered to buy the flat from her, she took like an extra long time just getting back on whether or not she was going to accept the deal. And I was like, oh my gosh, make up your gosh darn mind. So it was driving me a little crazy. Um, so she was supposed to get back to us on Friday as far as like meeting up and paying the deposit, signing the contract or whatever. She never called or anything. And um, honestly, I don't like that equality in a person. And I'm not willing to, I'm not, I'm not willing to, to go into a contract with her when she's so irresponsible. Um, if, you, if you say you're going to call somebody to do something like that, and you don't, like, it takes half a second to pick up your phone because we know that everybody carries their phone everywhere 24-7 um, and you can't simply text or whatever like you don't even have to call you just text us and let us know what's happening and she she was incapable of doing that and to be honest with you I'm just not having it I, I don't want to go into a contract um, so we we decided we're not moving and what we're going to do instead is we're going to uh, we're going to purge uh, this flat. We're going to get rid of 80% of everything we own and and just reorganize and, and take everything out. And um, I'm going to change this setup of mine and just try to make it in this flat. Just try to make it work better. Because I think I was I was just thinking one one evening I was like you know what maybe I can make this work a little bit better if I just uh, if I spend some more time figuring out ways to to organize my studio space you know in a manner that's just more efficient for myself and so that's the yeah that's the moving update I did have some intention of mentioning it today but I forgot actually. I was having so fun with this project but since you asked um, yeah so that is the situation and as of right now um, we will be staying here for at least one more year oh hey there Anna I didn't know that you were in the chat. Thank you, Elaine. I'm glad you like my, my work. Uh, if I would like, so if you would like me to critique some of your art artwork, where would you send it? Um, you know what? I haven't done a critique since I think uh, the end of last year. 
Then I do a critique at the end of last year, I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, so what I'm going to do, how would you guys like me to do an art critique next week as a live stream? What, I, what I'll do is I'll have you submit the work in the Unmask Family Facebook page. I'll make a post and you just submit your work in the comments and I'll do a live stream critiquing everybody's work. Yeah, my, my concern with my concern with her having her having her as a landlord is that, you know, if, if something breaks and something needs repaired, like how how long are we gonna have to wait? That's that's the issue that I have. If she want she seems really she re, she seems really, really unsure that she wants to rent the place out in the first place. Um which is also which is already a red flag, but the fact that she can't get back to us with a simple text message after like two weeks, um, is just uh, another really big red flag. Uh, you can submit one. Yeah, I would have I would just have you submit one, one piece of work for the critique. Because otherwise, you know, if I have like, if I have 10 people all submitting like five, I would never be able to get through it. But if I had, you know, 20 people submitting one, I'd, that'd still be a long stream, but still somewhat reasonable. Oh, thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. Alrighty then. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna smooth out the lips. The lips look super crusty right now. There's nothing more unattractive than crusty lips. Just way too crusty. I didn't even add any color to them. I'm just smoothing them out. looks better than yours. Well, I'm glad you think it looks good. All right, so for the lips, you know, I probably should have got light pink. I don't even know if I have a light pink. I'm gonna see if I can make this work. I'm gonna use some of the 642. Um, and I feel like her mouth is a little bit more open. I'm gonna grab the black. Try to try to make her lips look like just a a little bit more open. They're they're just a bit agape, I guess the word is. I love I love how her you can see her teeth a little bit. I, I don't know why I find that so attractive. It's really hard to do because, you know, you you uh, just like the whites of eyes. You always associate teeth with being white, but because of the lighting, the teeth are totally gray.
All right, that's probably about as good as it's going to get. Let's switch to the 642 color. And this is the color that I mainly used in the skin. I want to try to add essentially the skin back into the lips with, um, with texture in mind. So the thing with lips is pretty much the same thing with hair. You, you always want to kind of move in the direction, like moving in the right direction of the texture of the lips because the lips are all like kind of cracked and whatnot. But you don't want to over exempt, uh, over, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Overemphasize, that's the word. Overemphasize the uh, uh, cracked nature of lips because then, well, then you get pretty, pretty gross looking lips. You don't want to make them look dehydrated. Although her her facial expression kind of says, "I would go for some some water right about now." So maybe she is slightly dehydrated. All right, now I'm going to bring in a new color, which is that fuchsia color, bright pink, that 335, give her, her lips uh, some vibrancy here. This is just going to change the color of her lips very slightly. Just make them a bit, a bit brighter. All right, now for some extra texture with the black. The top edge of her bottom lip needs some extra texture to it. Because, uh, you know, lips aren't perfectly even. They, you know, they kind of have some bumps that show a little bit. And then for the highlight, I'm going to use the 110. She has just a hint of light hitting her lip right here. Kind of comes down like this. And she does have a little bit right here. A little sparkle. And you know what? I'm going to just highlight this edge right over here. Yeah, it's not quite the same color uh, because it. I went a little bit uh, deeper purple, but it's pretty close. Uh, the next thing I got to do, I kind of have to blend the lips into the skin a little bit right around the corners, because they don't they don't just stop abruptly, you know. They kind of fade into the skin. So I'm going to use a. A little bit of my 642 to kind of blur the edge of the lips, soften them around the edge right there at the corner. That'll just kind of help them sit on the face a little bit more naturally. There we 
go. And let's see. I have that darker gray, that 762. Uh, this might be the gray that I need for her teeth. Yeah, that's good enough. Her eyebrows are throwing me off. Her eyebrows need to be blended out a little bit more. Like I said, you can do the polishing stage for hours, for days, for weeks, however long you want to do it for. Um, yeah, that looks better. Uh, what I want to do, I, which I forgot to do, I want to do the sparklies uh, around the eyelid, uh, the shimmer. I need the shimmer. So I'm doing little dots to create the shimmer of, with the highlight color. This is the 110 gray. There we go, now her eyes have a nice shimmer to them. Uh, what I need to do now, I need to zoom out a little bit. I'm a little bit too close. Yeah, a little bit too close. So now uh, I want to add my fuchsia color and my orange to the skin. So let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit of it up here. Just redden up her skin. Uh, what, what pencil sharpener do I use? I use a Jakar electric pencil sharpener. Um, I don't know if it's the best. Of the best. It works amazing. Um, I've never used any other electric pencil sharpener before. So you might have other options. Uh, I just want to clarify that because I have answered a million and a half emails of people wanting to buy the Jakar electric sharpener. They want to buy the exact one that I have and they can never find it because it's only sold in the UK with a, a UK plug um, as far as I know. But yeah, I, there's probably other electric sharpeners that work just as well. So I just want to uh, clarify my position on my sharpener because I always get asked what pencil sharpener I use because there is continuous jealousy of my fantastically sharp pastel pencils which is totally understandable. I'm not proud of many things, but I am proud of how sharp my, my pastel pencils get. I don't usually brag, but when I do, it's about my pastel pencils and how sharp they are. The pencils I'm using are Carbothello Pastel Pencils. What type are they? The brand of my pencils 
is Stabilo. The make of the pencils are Carvathello. And the type is Pastel. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure uh, what I'm missing with the, with the question. Oh, this color just makes the skin come to life. Ah, oh, this is such a good color. So much wonderful red. Lovely pink in the skin. It just makes this, oh gosh, it just makes the skin come to life. I could, I could do this all day. Unfortunately, I don't have all day. I wish I had all day. Uh, if you remember me saying the best blender, uh, the best blender for pastel pencils is actually no blender at all. It is just the pencils themselves. I am, I'm brushing the paper with this pencil. That is how delicately I'm touching it. It's like I'm not even, it, it's essentially like I'm trying to avoid applying any color at all. That's that's about how much effort I'm putting into uh, actually applying this color. So I've been I've been asked uh, another uh, one of the other questions I'm asked a lot is like like what is light pressure? Like what is the actual amount of pressure that I'm applying? And I've tried a many different ways of describing the pressure. Um, and I would say it's like, uh, I would say the, the pressure is equal to, like if you were to take a feather from a bird, a really nice soft feather from a bird, and you had a dusty surface that you didn't want to disturb the dust, but you have to drag that feather across it. So if there's a dusty surface, you have a feather and you're trying to you're trying to not remove the dust, but you have to drag that feather across the surface. That is the pressure. You're trying to disturb nothing, but it inevitably happens because that is the nature of friction. Like just minuscule amounts and the, the key factor of, uh, you know, making it look good is all about patience and time. And really you just have to spend time. To be, to be a great artist is really just whoever spends the most time doing what they're doing. If somebody spends more time than you doing something, uh, they're probably gonna be better than you at it. The outcome is going to be better. Cause I mean, I could have finished the hair, uh, like like I finished the hair, you know, and, and then just called it done. I could have done that, right? Like most of you probably would have been pretty satisfied with the way that it looked beyond that. But the polishing stage is my favorite for one. So I'm gonna do it no matter what you guys think, cause it's fun. But spending this additional time making these teeny tiny little changes, like that is, that's what's going to make you elevate your work. You're, if you if you spend that extra amount of time doing the tiniest of changes, just making every square centimeter of your work look exactly the way that you wish it looked, you would blow your own mind at what you're capable of. You just have to apply the time. That's the that's the big secret. That is the big secret. I've said it, 
I've said it many times before, I am not that great of an artist. There are so many, so many wonderful artists way beyond my ability. And um, yet I'm still able to turn out work that impresses a majority of people, at least from my, from my consensus, I think I can impress a few people. Um, and it is nothing more than just a little bit of time. It's nothing more than that. Yes, patience. Patience is the, uh, the hardest, hardest skill to learn. You know, the, yeah, I have I have quite a bit of patience in art, which allows me to do things like this. But when it comes to comes to other things, I struggle with it. I struggle with it. So I can I can really really relate to anybody that struggles with the 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 patient side of things when it comes to art. Trust me, I know exactly how it feels. You're even aware. You're even self-aware that you're, you're being impatient when you're being impatient. And even when you say to yourself, why, why am I being impatient? Why, 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 why? Even then you can't stop it. And I know the struggle. It is, it's hard to develop patience where it, it just feels seemingly impossible to develop. And I think the only, I think the only way to get through it is, is time. Time allows you to develop that patience that you struggle to achieve. I think, um, my my progression in in my work over the past gosh what is it 26 years i think it's only that that continuous drive for perfection that allowed me to finally develop the patience that was necessary to do to do this but you're all capable of it. Yeah, you're all capable of it. Just takes time. All right, let's keep, let's keep going. Add some of the nice fuchsia down here. The music is so calming. Oh, I'm glad you find it calming. When will I do the next colored pencil drawing? I'm already doing the next colored pencil drawing. Uh, we started it three weeks ago? No, wait. Two. Two weeks ago. I, if you're wondering why I'm looking, it's hanging up on my wall right here, so that's why I'm looking over there. Yeah, it's coming together quite nicely. We're doing a, a, a male figure with a monochromatic color scheme. Essentially monochromatic. Black and white plus one color.
still trying to recognize colors. Yeah, that's, um, I, I wish that I could teach that. I really do. I credit my ability to match colors from years of painting using only the primary colors to do it. So back when I was 14 is when I first started painting with acrylic paints. And all of the paintings that I've ever done all the way up until I was 24, um, I always did with just the primary colors. Never anything other than the primaries. <clears throat> and so, of course, all the colors that I needed, I had to, uh, to mix. And so just uh, the years and years of experience mixing colors and getting the subtle changes and nuances of, of everything um, allowed me to kind of just develop a really good, uh, really good understanding of what makes colors colors when it comes to, to paint. And uh, all of those, all of those years finally paid off. Because it's now I can, now when I, when I look at colors, I can see, I can see the, the, the fine details of the color and what, what colors I can use to get that. Uh, I'm curious, who is my favorite colored pencil artist? Oh, I don't have one. I don't even, I don't even know, like, plural colored pencil artist. Uh, so I, I have to make a, I have to make a general comparison. So there's a, there's a lot of people that really like sports, right? Like a lot of people really like sports, like, uh, football or, or baseball or anything like that, hockey. And those people that really, really like sports, they tend to, they tend to know a lot of player names, right? They, they know like the quarterback of whatever team or the, the, the goalkeeper of whatever team or, or you know what I mean. They, they know the players' names, especially the players on their team. Right? They like know all the players, how long they've been there, where they came from, their hometown, their parents' names, their birth dates, when they graduated college, where they went to college. They know all those like uh, stats, all that information, right? And I, I've always somewhat admired that about f sport fanatics because I've never been able to n remember anything like that about anybody ever. And um, I don't do it. I just, I, I flat out don't do it. So like, I've been an artist for a very, very, very long time. And I barely know the names of, of the old masters. Um, I know, I know like zero, um, like modern day artists, you know, that are famous or whatever. If I, I honestly don't know one single famous modern day artist. I can't think of, well, Bob Ross, but I mean, everybody knows Bob Ross. Um, that doesn't count. Um, but aside from that, I, I don't know anybody. Like, I, have, I have some friends that are artists like, like Lisa and and, and all of you, you know, I'm not going to try to name everybody because I'm just going to embarrass myself. But, uh, yeah, in, in general, I just don't, I just don't know names. Uh, and the same is true with like music that I listen to. Like I, I listen, I listen to mostly metal, but, um, I, I'll know the, I'll know the band's name, but I won't know like the member's name. I won't know. I won't know the, the titles of their songs. 
I, I won't know the lyrics. I'll listen to a song like 500 times and I, I still won't know like the, even the chorus of the song. Because I just, I just experience the music. I don't like analyze it to death and like learn the, the lyrics. I just listen to it. So yeah, that's um that's that's my really long uh excuse. I'm not even going to call it a, a reason. It's just an excuse of why I don't have favorites of anything. Fa when it comes to favorite if it's a person, I probably can't like favorite artist, favorite author, favorite actor. I couldn't I couldn't give you a name to all to any of those. The highlight on the chin is making the chin just look a little bit too, like, jutted out. It makes me not like it. So I gotta, I gotta push the chin back. It's just a bit too, too much. Too much chin. Oh, thank you so much, Laura, by the way, uh, for the super chat. Favorite chess master. Actually, favorite chess master, I don't know. Uh, Ding Liren. I, I love I love Ding Liren. He's he's just he's just great. He's so humble. He's such a gosh, he's such a beast on the chessboard. He's absolute just I, 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 I he's just great. Yeah, Ding Liren. He, every time he does an interview, he just seems like he's scared to death. And um it just makes me love him even more. Yeah. Ding Liren is my favorite chess master. I was I was really really hoping that he was going to become the the candidate, but uh, he did really really bad in the first half half of the candidates tournament this year before they canceled it. They they had they had the candidates tournament going on when the whole while well, the whole thing was going uh, earlier this year. Um, but, uh, they got like halfway through it and they stopped it. And, uh, Ding Liren was, I think he, I think he lost like every game, which was really, really disappointing because he's not like that. He just like a, a year and a half ago or whatever, um, he went a hundred games without ever losing in the classical format, which is just, just ridiculous to think about. Lo not losing for like a whole year and a half, never lost a game. It's just crazy. Actually, chess chess might be my my sport because I can I can actually name quite a few chess players. I could probably get pretty close to naming the top ten chess players in the world, which I don't think I'd, I I would have never thought would be a sentence out of my mouth. If you would if you'd have told me when I was in high school that in in like fifteen years you're going to be able to name 
almost all the the top chess players in the world. Um, I would have been like, uh, doubt it. I would have probably thought it was like really nerdy or something like that. I was your I was your typical non-conforming uh, teenager when I was in high school. All right, time to add some orange to the skin. Uh, have I played Magic the Gathering? Uh, yes, uh, I was really into Magic the Gathering and then I quit. I played it for like a year and a half. Um, and then I quit, uh, I quit playing it like last year around December or something like that. I still have all of my cards, but I just couldn't do it anymore. I really liked going um, playing in tournaments and playing like Friday Night Magic, but um, I went back to the United States and I played at this one, this one location and um, it was a, it was a, a, a sealed tournament, it was a sealed tournament and I was like, oh, I was really excited to, uh, to play in it and I pulled some really nice cards. This is when Dominaria came out or whatever, shortly after Dominaria came out. And I pulled some really, really nice cards. And I played against this guy. Very, very first round of the tournament, I played against this guy. And my deck just completely destroyed him. And he just straight up accused me of cheating. He accused me of um, swapping cards with, with somebody that I knew at the tournament. And I was immediately just super irritated. Um, by his by his comment, and I was like, I don't even live in this country. Uh, I, I I'll admit I kind of felt cool being able to say that, but because um, this was just you know in Ohio, and um, it just really put me off from from wanting to play. And then the same day, the same tournament. Um, it was like the fourth or fifth round, and I was doing pretty good. I was doing pretty good. I mean, I was, I was, I had a possibility of going to like the top eight out of like 70 people or something. And uh, I was in the middle of like this first game on this with this opponent, and uh, I had, he had like no life left. He had no cards in hand. He was completely busted. And um, he had like, he had a bunch of monsters out, but they were just tokens. They're just one, one tokens or whatever. Something easy to get rid of. And it was still his turn. And I, had, I, I told him, I, I told him like, no matter what he does, I'm going to kill all his monsters. Because I had a card in my hand that, that kills all his monsters. And he got all... He got all angry about it. And called the Arbiter over to, like, I don't know, to, to get me to lose. Because I said that. And I'm sitting there, and the Ar he calls the Arbiter over. And... Um, he straight up lies to the Arbiter about what I said. Like, I had just said it. And he, he, he tells the Arbiter I said something completely different. And, um, and I was just like, I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. It just, it, it made me so upset that I just quit playing the game. So I haven't played since. I didn't, I didn't want to, I just didn't want to play anymore. So uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't played, I haven't played in a long time. It was, it was fun for, for some time, but uh, the other thing is that the game is so, 
detrimentally fall, flawed with um, uh, with with the system that it, like the way that it operates. Um, it relies way too heavily on chance because the games essentially boil down to the games essentially boil down to one who wins the coin toss because whoever wins the coin toss it has like 80 percent chance of winning the match um, because they get to go first so that's that's the first thing and it's like well if, if that's the case you might as well just flip a coin three times flip a coin whoever gets head heads wins and then whoever gets you know uh, heads twice they just win the match because that's essentially how it boils down to and uh, I mean there is some skill involved but generally it all comes down to luck because you can you can be the worst player in the world and still beat the best player in the world simply because the best player in the world doesn't draw anything but lands in a game a game like that I mean, a game flawed so 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 much like that. Just uh, it, I just couldn't do it anymore. <clears throat> Anyways, enough about magic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm still a little bitter, but I, I don't want to put the game down. And most of you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, Anyways, I added a little bit of uh, orange to the face there. Uh, it's looking looking good. I need to sh uh, shade the nose a bit more. But yeah, I need to I need to finish this up and get going. I need to clean before my wife returns home. Oh, you want to see more graphite tutorials? Maybe. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I like color so much. I like working with color so much that just graphite... You know, I haven't really done... I really haven't had the, uh, the interest. And the thing is, like, there's not a huge difference, technically speaking, uh, between working with colored pencils and graphite like if you can if you can make something look good with colored pencils then you, you should absolutely have no issues whatsoever with graphite because the the technical skills with graphite is actually very very limited because all you have to worry about is values right we're doing doing a graphite project is mainly you know just learning to draw Like if you if you trace if you trace line art to do a graphite project, uh, you might be cutting yourself short a little bit. You might want to just uh, you know focus on your drawing skills if if graphite's the direction you'd you'd want to you'd want to go. But maybe maybe I'll do a graphite tutorial sometime. I have I have a lot of a lot of projects that people have asked for. Um, the next colored pencil project. The next colored pencil project is going to be an owl. And I had a number of people want um, wanting a, a landscape, a fantasy landscape that involves a castle for the next pastel project. And I am keen on doing that, but I also have a request. For another portrait, but somebody with dark skin, um, and I can't remember if that was for pastel tutorial or colored pencil tutorial. I suppose it doesn't really matter what which medium it is, and but um, you know, skin tone. You can never have too many tutorials on skin tone because 
no matter how many tutorials I do on skin tone, people are still afraid to apply color. And so, skin tone tutorials are the easiest of tutorials to just keep doing, because no matter how many I make, people are still going to have questions. The, the funny thing about skin tone is that yeah, the skin color doesn't actually exist. It's just simply whatever, you know, whatever the, the lighting requires of you. You know, if I, if you stand in a green light, your skin's going to be green. If you stand in a red light, your skin's going to be red. No matter what shade of skin you have in white light. The lighting itself is what makes skin tone skin tone, and really what uh, what people struggle with is getting skin to look alive because they don't know how to use the right colors. Yeah, blonde-haired person, man. Uh, usually, usually dark darker complexions don't have blonde hair. There is there is actually a tribe in Africa where blonde hair is is natural blonde blonde curly afros um probably won't probably won't do a portrait of 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 that cuz that's uh that texture of hair is is not the you know you know, the process is not the same it's it's similar but it's it's also different uh, let's see, I need to add some blue to the shirt, bring out some of the blue. Also smooth the shirt, the shirt just looks a little rough to me. But I think, I think I'm going to call it done after I do this with the, the shirt. I just want to add some blue to it and yeah, I think I'm going to call this project done. I think it looks pretty good. I could easily spend like another three days on it just polishing every little detail, making it exactly the way that I want it to look, but um, I'm not going to do that. If you guys have any last questions uh, about this project, ask them really quick because I'm going to essentially just add some blue to the shirt here, and then I'm going to do everybody's favorite part, and that's untape the border. And we're gonna have a look at what this what this uh, looks like without the ugly tape border. Because if you think the flyaways made the hair look significantly different and better, untaping a pastel project completely transforms the the painting. It just goes from meh to like wow. And let's see. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna call it done. Let me just move my pencils out of the way. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom out. Oh, I didn't realize I was zoomed in the whole time. So that should be in focus now. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. I'm just going to put these pencils over here and then I'm going to untape it and we'll have a look at what the final thing looks like. All right, let's go ahead and untape it. Organize a drawing competition. I, I don't know if it was you that asked before. I, I was asked like not. Um, I was I was asked not too long ago to do a competition. 
Um, but my, my feelings about art competitions has kind of evolved relatively recently. Like I would say like in the last year, maybe two years. I did do a coloring competition not too long ago. And it didn't really dawn on me at that time how I felt about competitions. But um, I just have a hard time with, with any art type competition because I, I, I think it defeats the purpose of art to, to turn it into a competition. I really just, I don't know, I just, I just can't get on board with it. Not anymore anyway. I'm trying to make this not fall. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to do any drawing competitions. I don't want to judge people's work and I don't want to claim one person is better than the other for any arbitrary reason. All right, everyone, and there you have it. That is the uh, finished, um, that is the finished painting. There you go. There it is. Um, all right. So that is going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Um, this is the last project that I'll be doing here on YouTube. So if you want to um, continue learning pastels and colored pencils, I still do. I, I'm still going to do colored pencil and pastel tutorials every Tuesday and Thursday, but those are going to be over on Patreon. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, not too long ago, we already started the, the other colored pencil uh, project and we're a couple, couple sessions into that one. Um, and the next pastel project is going to be fantasy landscape with a castle or just sprinkled in there somewhere. Um, so yeah, that's, that's going to be the next pastel painting if you want to join in over on Patreon. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for, for now. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, be sure to give the uh, live stream a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.